Anyone who's seen the movie was moved by it in the 60s. Does anyone remember that movie? You want to talk about why I'm talking about Omar Sharif and Julie Christie? He's dead already. I, he died. She's still around. I think she's on a walker in Boca Raton eating uh, uh, Metamucil. She's uh, making Metamucil pancakes in Julie. I, today, look, a Jefferson Airplane guy died. Larry Cantner, 74. You know, look, whatever. I'm not, no, not gloating over it. Just glad it wasn't me. I'm glad I didn't read about me in the newspaper today. But then again, I couldn't have because if I did, it wouldn't be there. He used to hang around a certain cafe. He was a nice enough old guy. Chain smoked. And I don't have to tell you what else our musicians did over the last 40 years that I didn't do. Now, let's not talk about the State Department withholding top secret Clinton memos. No, no, no. Let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about the fact that a liberal school teacher helped the jailbirds escape in California by giving them saws. Let's not talk about the Hannibal Lecter that she uh, let get out of jail because she thought he loved her. Oh, God. That's unreal, right? Now, Fox is spinning last night's debate saying it's the second highest rated show in Fox News history. Total bull. Total double talk. The first highest was with Donald Trump. Of course, the second highest, you idiots. You think people are that dumb? Yes. If they believe what you put out on the air, of course they're that dumb. I think Rachel Madcow is more to be believed now than Fox News. You know, I trust Rachel Madcow more than I do Kelly Springfield, whatever her name is. Is her name Kelly Springfield, the River Dancer? I forget. Well, whatever her name is. At least, you know, Mad Cow is a commie psycho, and she's consistent. The other one pretended to be a conservative all these years. Now she's going after the leading candidates uh, of the conservative uh, wing of the conservative, non-conservative party. Freed from sanctions, Iran makes billion-dollar deals. Really? No kidding. You didn't know that would happen? That why the Italians covered up the statues? How many U.S. senators have done deals through their husbands? Or shall I say, how many U.S., uh, <clears throat> let's put it in a more generic sense, because I really uh, don't want to swim at the fishes. Let's say it this way. How many U.S. politicians have family members who are making hundreds of millions of dollars on deals with Iran? Nobody knows, because it's not covered by Fox News. Why? Interlocking, interlocking corporate directorships. That's all. Oregon suspects won't be released. You hear what they're doing to them, this fascist dictatorship that I told you about? First, they kill one of the men who gave up. Now the other men, they're not releasing. Are you? Can you believe this? A federal communist judge, Stacey F. Beckerman, a so-called U.S. magistrate judge, said she will not release any of the people arrested in the standoff while the occupation continues. That's totally illegal. The judge should be thrown off the bench for this. They killed one of them. They made their point. They arrested the others. Now they have a right to their day in court. But this U.S. magistrate is now acting like a communist dictator, a court-appointed communist Politburo member, and she won't let any of the others out of prison. Now, many of you cheer that. Yeah, yeah, keep them in jail. Eleven people arrested, and this little dictator in a, in a skirt says you can't, we're not letting you out. Violation of their civil rights. Ladies and gentlemen, if they were all black and one black man was killed by a white policeman and then they wouldn't let the others who had protested out of jail, can anyone tell me what would be going on in this country? We have illegal immigrant invaders occupying San Francisco and other cities known as sanctuary cities. Illegal immigrant invaders occupying San Francisco. Here we have an empty wildlife refuge. Poor white farmers go in there and say, we don't approve of your policies, and they kill one of them and arrest the others and won't let them out of jail. Don't say a fugitive from justice resisted arrest and was shot by an Oregon State officer. The Oregon State police officer is a fascist murderer. And if you want to see the tape, you can find the tape. He came out with his hands up and they killed him. And why are they keeping the rest of them in, in, in prison? How about Ruby Ridge? Who got sent to jail for that? How come Waco, who got sent to jail for that? Now, they were different situations, by the way. But they didn't get what they deserved at Ruby Ridge nor Waco. But, ladies and gentlemen, this is a miscarriage of justice. How do you feel when you see law enforcement tanks knocking over homes, setting buildings on fire, and other agents shooting anyone trying to escape when they tell them to put your hands up? 
855-400-7282. Are you going to prosecute the cop who shot an unarmed man with his hands up, Mr. Obama? Miss Lynch, are you going to investigate this violation of civil rights? The Oregon State Police officer, we have the tape. It's on michaelsavage.com. Uh, you don't care. Okay. You want Trump Cruise, Trump Cruise, Trump Cruise, Trump Cruise, Trump go board. All board, Trump Cruise, Trump Cruise, choo 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 choo. Trump Cruise, Trump Cruise, Trump Cruise, board. Nothing else, zero. Like a brain dead audience. Trump Cruise, Trump Cruise, Trump Cruise. When is this going to be over? Please save me from the American political nightmare. This is sickening. It's. I think it is a creation. You know, I heard when I was young that Mother's Day, Father's Day, all those holidays, Valentine's Day, and all. Were holidays created for selling products? And maybe they are. They have nice meanings. I kind of like them. And to sell greeting cards. I'm starting to think that the American elections are not much different than greeting card holidays. And I think the American elections are held for the media only to boost ratings and drive up ad revenue. And frankly, I'm so tired of it. I'd rather talk about scabbies than talk about the election. Back in a minute. We are in the final stretch of our number three of uh, the Savage Nation. And boy, oh boy, it's getting frightening out there. How much can you listen to comments on the comments on the comments on the comments about what happened? How much can you take already? Don't you want to vote and get it over with? Let him indict Hillary. Let it be Bernie against Trump. Let it be commun communism versus capitalism. And you'll see America is not ready for communism. It's that simple. Come, you'll come to your senses at that point. Okay, let's take some calls. Daniel on WJR in Detroit. Go ahead, please. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Savage. Um, from Michigan here, and um, I think a lot of people, us Michiganders, want to see Trump versus Bernie Sanders. Um, we've had a GOP kind of running our state for a while, and if you notice in recent headlines, uh, our governor, Snyder, who is backed by... Um, you know, a lot of uh, rich families who get to uh, have uh, sec secret money kind of going to the GOP party in Michigan here. Uh, he's done a terrible job with the state. Um, so I think so you would blame you would blame Republicans for what happened to Detroit as well. Um, I would say no. And you I know, go ahead. Blame Nixon for what happened to Detroit when you had a black mayor. Well, I'm, I'm aware that, you know, we have you had a black Democrat mayor running Detroit. He robbed it blind and collapsed the city. So you're going to blame that on Republicans, too? No, I, I am aware that both Flint and Detroit have had Democrat rule um, before Snyder came in. Oh, well, thank you very much. You mean there was an actual past to what is happening today and that the evil Republicans didn't create it all? Moreover, you're saying that Hillary Clinton doesn't get any money from billionaires and trillionaires and that she herself is not a multi-hundred millionaire? I, I definitely, I'm with you there with, with Hillary, but this... All right, well, thank you very much. If you're a communist, there's a place for you to go. You can go to Hungary, for example. I think they still have a branch of the Communist Party. You can go to, uh, I think that there are still blocks, communist parties, in, in uh, many portions of the uh, nations within the EU. They still have a splinter group for communists. And I have nothing against it. At least people can make a choice. This is the problem in America. If we had a rational, if we had a rational political system with a large spectrum of choices, tell me where Bernie Sanders would be represented, with which branch, which plank of which party. He'd be in the communist, which they don't call it anymore. He would be the socialist plank of the far left party. Now, you're going to tell me that that man is, is, is capable of representing a nation of hundreds of millions of people who don't want anything to do with communism unless they themselves are either on the receiving end of the largesse of such a state or they will profit directly from such a state? Why would anyone want communism if they're working for a living? You know what I often say to people? say, well, you know, I have a cousin or a brother-in-law and they vote liberal all the time. I say, tell me about them. Do they work? No, they're students. Tell me about them. Well, he, he's basically a slacker. He's 40 years old. He's never really held a job. He lives in his mother's house. Okay. Uh, he doesn't really know what's going on. He's stoned all the time. Okay. 
Anyone who works for a living doesn't want to vote Democrat, Socialist, because all they're going to do is look at their first paycheck. You take a young kid, they come out of college, they don't know anything, but already they're full of opinions that are put in their head, like parrots, they come out, and some of them were bright when they went in there, basically useless when they come out of college. They have to be re-educated by real life, 101. And all they got to do is look at their first paycheck, at their first real job. And even if that job is in Starbucks, even if it's just serving coffee, if they look at what is deducted at the end of the day of their work, they'll say, my God, that's high. I didn't know that. I had a scholarship. My father sent me money. My mother sent me money. I didn't know that there were, taxes were so high. And then eventually they get a real job, and it's even, it's even worse for them. Anyone who's not a liberal at 20 has no heart. Anyone who's still a liberal at 40 has no mind. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7287. Savage. This is so big that I've saved it for the last 20 minutes. Top secret info found in Clinton emails. This is the biggest story of the year. It, the... The emails are so top secret that they won't release them saying that people can't even look at them in Congress. They, the, okay, but the bigger part of the story is that the State Department itself just turned on Hillary Clinton, threw her under the bus. The State Department itself threw Hillary Clinton under the bus today, three days before the Iowa caucuses, in which Clinton is a candidate against the Bolshevik. He, uh, the John Kirby, the State Department spokesmouth said this. He said, the documents are being upgraded at the request of the intelligence community because they contain a category of top secret information. So they're not going to publish them online because they are so highly sensitive. And what that means is that they probably contain information that could lead back to the double agents who provided it, and they'll get, they'll get killed. So why would Clinton release them? Let me tell you something else. Even if Hillary only read and didn't write or forward the secret messages, she still was required to report classification slippages that she recognized. But she's going to argue that there were no classification markings, so she didn't know that they were that top secret. Did you hear what I just said? Her spokesmouth today said, we firmly oppose the complete blocking of the release of these emails. You hear? So she's saying she wants them released. Well, that's an interesting statement. Why would she say that we oppose the blocking of the release of these emails if her own State Department is saying that we're not releasing all of them, that we're censoring 22 emails uh, that require one of the highest levels of classification? We're going to have the sound, by the way, in a few minutes of John Kirby of the State Department saying that. They're throwing her under the bus. She's saying if they release them, she can defend herself. They're saying they're so top secret they can't release them. So doesn't that indicate to you that her own, her own State Department, who works not for her, but for who? Who does the State Department report to? Ah, huh, the magician. Merlin the magician controls the State Department. Have you noticed Merlin has been silent this week? He said almost nothing. Merlin's been in the background, and he sends out the communists from Chicago, uh, Axel, Axelrod. Axelrod, the lifetime street organizer communist. Axelrod is so to the left of Bernie Sanders that he makes Bernie Sanders look like a Republican. I love every time I turn on a channel now, all I see is Axelrod like a legitimate spokesman without anyone identifying. The guy should come with a warning label. Axelrod, who was Obama's brain, should come with a warning label on his chest. Caution, I've been a lifetime left-wing fanatic. I think people ought to wear, wear warning labels in this, in this scene. No one knows who they are. They wear a suit and tie. You don't know who they are. That's topic number 1297 today, and I'm still going strong. How is that possible? Where do I get this energy from? I have no idea. 74 years old, he died today, the, uh, the, the singer for the, uh, what's that group I've been talking about? Jefferson Airplane. But he smoked. You always say, but, why you're alive and he's not, or you say, that was close. You know, oh, sorry to hear it. Sorry he died. But then you look at why. Oh, he smoked. It's like you had... Like you grab onto something, anything. The worst cases are guys who are younger than you who die, and you inquire. You say, really, no kidding. What did he? What was his life like? Oh, he took vitamins day and night. Really, no kidding. Well, but he used drugs. No, no, he never touched them. In fact, he didn't even drink. You don't know where to go with that. 
Well, he probably